Now, Liam, I am a very fussy movie goer. You you know this probably better than anybody. Uh, like Japanese or bust. Pretty much. Uh, my favorite movie this year has been Japanese so far. So we'll uh, we'll just leave that there. The, the, the superhero story. Right. No, but <laughs> good guess. Um, no. So I've also just finished reading Initial D, all seven hundred seventeen uh, chapters Wait, of it. Wait, you read the manga? I uh, know, right? It's the only way to do it. Um, so I was ready for more fast racing, more stupid maneuvers in cars, more of that kind of high octane thrill and energy. So that's why tonight after work, I went out and saw Cars 3 so we could discuss... He went and saw Cars 3 and I would watch Boss Baby before I would watch Cars 3. Yeah, look, Cars 3 was not great. Speaking of Cars and, and Babies, babies yeah. Baby Driver, uh, the new movie by Edgar Wright, so of the Cornetto trilogy, I guess... Perhaps the Shaun of the Dead, Dead, Hot Fuzz, World's End, and also Scott Pilgrim, so, which he directed, not Matthew Vaughan. Correct, Vaughan. that's yeah. true, he did. Um, a very visually striking film. The one thing yes. he does is he, all of his uh, movies have this particular flair to them. Like They'll either have visual representation of, of a plot device or whatever the case may be, set to not fantastic Not only is he a great director, he's a great editor. And yes. that really comes through. That, that, the, the editing is, and flow is, is yep. incredible. One of, the few, one of the few directors I look at and I go... You can tell he's had a hand in this because you know there's even one scene in this where a car will take off this way. They they zoom out to the car, see the wheels go this way, and then he overcuts it with a car coming this way, and it just looks like a fantastic wipe. And he's never actually cleared the screen, like little things like that. He's just visually he nails it every single time. Yeah, you know? and the great thing about this is it doesn't have Simon Pegg in it either, which is always a positive. Uh, he was fun to interview. <laughs> um, no, so the story is. Uh, is baby is a young getaway driver who's yep. been doing it since he was um, a young like kid, ten years yeah. old. Hence the name baby. Yeah. Uh, who sort of, kind of. So he he's, he's kind of lo- tied to his mob boss. It's, yes. it's hard to say. He's tied K- to his Kevin mob Spacey's, boss. Kevin yeah. uh, So it's you know it's it's pretty good. Um. So he does all these different jobs, and as time gets progressively worse, it starts off, and it's like you know you'll come into this life, blah blah. By the end of it, he's very much in the life, and, um. It's it's a it's an interest. It really is a film of three parts. Like you know, he, he, Edgar very much sticks to those traditional styles of beginning, middle, end, which is not a bad thing at all. Um, and it engages you most of the way through. I find the biggest problem is that there are points where you can tell that he softened a couple of things or did a couple of things for the American audience. Yeah, th- this feels. Uh, I guess especially with the Conan trilogy, it's very much you know these are parodies of a, a genre. This, yes. and this, this is this is definitely a love letter to. You know, road Transporter movies and, 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 and uh, getaway, yeah. Yeah. Um, sort of, and the, the high side of getaway films. Definitely a love letter um, and uh, a great interpretation, of interpretation it. on that genre. Um, but it feels like it's playing it straighter. Like it's still funny. There's still great comedic. Because Americans can't understand subtlety. Like I hate to be that guy, and I know a lot of YouTube people watch you know this from America, but you don't understand subtlety. And and so he, he a couple of broad strokes he makes are just a bit too broad. However. Still a fantastic movie. Great cast. Great cast. Great, casted amazingly. Even Jamie Foxx, who normally ruins everything, is okay in this. John Hamm is really good, really yeah. menacing. Yeah, he goes ham. Yeah. He goes ham. Um, but, like, genuinely worth a watch. Probably one of the best films of the year so far. I, I've enjoyed it a lot. The music's also great in the way they use that. Yeah. Uh, I've also just seen a movie called A Monster Calls, which is a kid's film that's not really for kids, um, where it's this, like, 11-year-old boy's... Uh, lives with his mum who has cancer, so he has to sort of look right, after himself. Right, I understand metaphors. He, get, he gets bullied at school and yeah. has a hard time. So he summons this sort of then monster. Then he eating pancakes. No, so. no. So he summons a monster um, who who comes up to his window and says he will tell him three tales. And then after the three tales, the boy Connor has to tell him the fourth. And the tales are beautifully animated. And it's actually a really interesting film, except for the fact that it's like, it's a kids' film, but it's a bit dark for kids. And but is, is that because you're used to Hollywood kids' films, where they've all got to be fucking sunshine and lollipops, or you don't get released? Well, or... I mean, th- this this does have a lot of Hollywood actors. Yeah. Like this has like Sigourney Weaver, has right, Liam okay. Neeson, has uh, Felicity Jones from right, uh, right. Rogue One. Okay. So it, it's a really good film. It probably just make your kids cry. It's good they need to sometimes. Little fucks. 